Hey everyone, Micah here with Electric, and today I'm coming to you from Wyoming, Minnesota, where I'm out here visiting Polaris at their headquarters, and we are testing the all-new, all-electric Ranger XP Kinetic. This thing is wild. The power, the torque, we've been playing with it all afternoon, and it is just, it's crazy. Come along with us, you gotta experience it. Within just a few seconds of starting out, I could already tell how much fun this was gonna be. Yes, these are work vehicles, utility is in the name, but damn if they aren't super fun to ride in a recreational setting too. The 110 horsepower motor is more powerful than any other Ranger, or in fact, any other side-by-side -side for that matter. But the vehicles are still nice and nimble, easily maneuvering around these tight forested paths, but then really putting that power to use when you get to open things back up. Now when you hop inside the cockpit, it more or less looks the same as any other gas-powered Ranger you probably already know and love, though with a few key differences that make it even easier to operate. In fact, it only took a 60 second or so private instruction and I was basically Ranger qualified. That's how easy it is to use. From there, it was basically all fun and games. I should probably admit that I haven't actually driven a side-by-side -side before. Anyone who knows me knows I'm more of an electric two-wheeler guy, but that just means I finally didn't have to worry about small inconveniences like falling over. With four wheels, I could hold that pedal to the floor in turns and simply keep the tires pointed in the direction I wanted to go. Oh man, was this thing a blast to ride, making use of all of that power at your disposal. And that kind of power is no joke. I didn't catch it on camera, but at one point the journalist in front of me hit a tree and no one even noticed. I'm not sure he even noticed. He just kept going all la di da di da like he didn't just power through a freaking tree. And just like I've talked about before with electric motorcycles, one of the coolest things about making these types of vehicles electric is that you can not only hear what's going on around you, but you can actually share a conversation with the people either riding with you in your vehicle or in vehicles around you without trying to shout over an engine. This is amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. The awesome part is, is we're both talking in different machines. Yeah. So this is the Ranger XP Kinetic. It's got the I mean, just listen to this. This is the raw, unprocessed audio straight out of my camera. You can hear the motor. It's not totally silent, but you know what else you can hear? The dirt crunching under your tires, the animals around you, legit birds chirping. And yeah, when I really put the pedal down here, you can hear the motor wind up more, and so it still gives you that fun feedback like you're communicating with the vehicle and it's talking back to you, but not at the expense of all your other senses being blown out by unnecessary harsh sounds and smells and vibrations, etc. Even if your main goal isn't integrating more into the world around you, which if you're an outdoorsman then it probably is, but even if this is just your getting work done vehicle, it's really a nice benefit to simply experience everything better along your ride. There's a lot to like about the Ranger XP Kinetic, and the smooth ride over rough terrain is of course a Ranger hallmark, but specifically in the XP Kinetic with its 110 horsepower electric motor, there's just so much power here, the side-by-side -side simply flies up and over everything you tell it to. Even racing uphill is no problem. I don't even think it knows it's climbing a hill. All it knows is you stomped on the accelerator and by god it's gonna answer that call come hell or high water. It's like it just wants to please. And then when it's time to slow down again, you almost don't even have to use the brake pedal since the regenerative braking can offer really strong engine braking. The precise nature of electric motors makes it easy to creep and crawl with precision too, even on hills and uneven terrain. I also have to give props to the designers for making the cabin so camera friendly with plenty of mounting options. That won't matter to most of you, but if you're a one-man band like me that has to frame, film, shoot, and edit yourself, it's the little luxuries that make it so much nicer. It's also surprising just how roomy it is in there in that cabin, as in you can't even get to the passenger side without unbuckling. Though I guess that's the benefit of having a three-seater, you get to share the fun with even more people that way. 
Plus there are other cool features in the ride command screen that gives you all sorts of useful tools like checking on other vehicles in your fleet, dropping waypoints to mark things you saw or points where you maybe dropped off some gear, messaging other vehicles which we demonstrated with our photographer follow vehicle, determining how far you are from a charging location, and a pile of other features I didn't even get to play with yet. Speaking of that charging, this is where a bunch of y'all are probably like, oh, I bet it doesn't last long on a charge. So here's the deal. There are two battery options available in the two models. The $24,999 loadout, known as the premium model, which is counterintuitively actually the entry-level model, gets 40 miles of range from around a 15 kilowatt hour battery. If you upgrade to the ultimate model for another 5,000 bucks, you get twice the battery and twice the range up to 80 miles. And again, here's where the naysayers are going to be all, oh, well, that's not enough rain for me on my 10,000 acre logging farm or my Uncle Tyson's ranch with 30 bajillion chickens on it. You might have heard of him, he's got a chicken company. But here's the thing, it's probably more than enough for you. Yeah, there are some edge cases out there, but you're probably not one of them. You aren't Tyson chicken and you don't do more than 80 miles a day. In fact, almost no one does. A Polaris engineer told me how funny it is that when surveyed, many Ranger owners will say that they do around 100 miles a week and they average around 35 or 40 miles an hour, but then the data loggers show they really do like 20 miles a week and average 17 miles an hour. Everyone thinks they need more than they do, but the simple fact is that they don't, and even if they did, this is absolutely more than most people need. 110 horsepower and 80 miles of range on a charge are awesome specs, and of course you can just recharge in your barn or garage each night instead of having to deal with ferrying red gas cans back and forth to the gas station. In my opinion, this is just a better way to be, whether it's for utility or recreation. Now I'm obviously pretty positive here, and it's because I had such a good experience testing out the Ranger Kinetic XP, but it wasn't all perfect. If I had to find complaints, other than the price being a bit steep, I found the reverse to not be nearly as precision controlled as the forwards operation. It's nice and easy to shift into, but I feel like it needs a bit more programming to smooth out the reverse gear and make it easier to line up with a tow hitch or something like that. The nice thing though is that A, these are prototypes, so by the time they ship next year that will probably all be worked out, and B, that's such an easy fix that all you need is an engineer with a laptop and a data cable. Even future updates can likely be sent over the air, so you don't need to visit a shop every time some tiny little thing happens, which is even more true of electric since you have way less maintenance to deal with on these than gas engines. Basically, my summary is, there is a lot to appreciate here, and despite the steep price, they make awesome work or play vehicles. I just wish I had more time to play. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that first ride here in the Electric Ranger XP Kinetic. This thing is just wild and you really can't get a total sense of it until you get your butt in the seat and try it yourself. But I hope that this gave you a bit of a sense of the experience. It is something that is just crazy to feel all of the torque, all of the power and all of the control that you have here. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why don't you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.